newspaper man sam went off good as his word to see what was happening at esmeralda he was 26 years old he had a red beard wore the usual floppy hat of the miner had let his hair go long and dressed in rough clothes and big boots as a picturesque touch he had a navy revolver tucked into his belt even though he could not shoot he carried the gun as part of his dress in the west a man would as soon be seen without pants as without a gun most of the men who headed for esmeralda were seeking their fortunes a wild crew used to sudden shootings savage quarreling and endless knifing fortunes were being made lost made lost made and lost men came into town paupers and went out millionaires or came in millionaires and went out paupers many never left at all but were buried in rude pine coffins and put in the little cemetery which seemed to grow as fast as the population aurora 8 miles from the walker river a ghost town today was then humming with activity it was a town founded on easy money easy come easy go with all the lawless lawless immorality that such loose money brings men came into riches too quick they lost their sense of humility and the feeling of being like other men they felt themselves above the law and often took the law into their own hands it was a city of men who knew no real law save the gun who knew no real law save the gun women were few there were no wives only a scattering of dance hall girls when a wagon train of settlers occasionally went through the miners would rush out and stare begging just to touch a dress that a woman wore the sight of a child could reduce these hundred men to tears the esmeralda claim which orion and sam had invested in turned out to be more trouble than it was worth Sam had made the trip with a man named Higby. Higby, but Higby was no better a miner than Sam. The two were understandably, understandably discouraged. But eventually, Higby located where what he thought was a fortune in silver. The two filed. their claim and were going to start in working it immediately in accordance with the law which stated they must work their claim within 10 days to hold on to it unfortunately while higby was away sam was called to tend a sick friend sam left a note for higby telling him to go ahead with the ex- excavating when sam returned on the ninth day he asked higby how much had been done higby looked at sam in astonishment didn't you get me not he demanded higby then confessed that he had gone on to to see about another mine that he was sure would bring them a fortune he had left a note for sam which sam in his haste had missed their claim had not been worked and the two men lost it it turned out 
later that the mine would have perhaps been worth a fortune for both men sam's money which he had saved from his steamboating days was rapidly dwindling and he was forced to take a job as a day laborer in quartz mill his wages were 10 dollars a week and board bacon beans coffee bread apples and molasses his working hours were from dawn to dusk and one week was enough to convince him that he was not cut out for that kind of work but sam had to make money earlier he had received a job offer from joseph goodman editor of the territorial enterprise and he now decided to go back to newspaper work goodman knew sam's work from occasional short sketches that sam had sent him sam signed these humorous pieces josh and the offer which came for josh work was for 25 dollars a week a lordly sum in sam's present position sam clemens walked 100 miles to virginia city he was through with mining and ready to make his fortune by writing he had come to believe that the pen might be mightier than the pick x when he arrived at the newspaper office he was hot and tired covered with dust and burned down with clothing blankets and rucksack sack rucksack and canteen his appearance was hardly one to inspire confident confidence but in the waste men had learned to judge a man not by his appearance but by the testing of his character close in virginia city did not make the man it did not take some long to prove himself worth all the confidence his articles had previously inspired virginia city was one of the toughest of the tough cities of the west a lawless huddle of saloons gambling houses and other unsavory meeting places for criminals horse thieves rustlers desperados desperados and drifters the town had 15000 people most of them unprincipled but they were well suited to a town which hung on the edge of a mountain and which looked as if it might slide down its mountain side at any moment there was an ever present danger too that the town might cave in there was a whole behave of tunnels under virginia city where the miners had taken out earth and ore virginia city the town that silver had built was a brazy blaring town everyone was rich everyone spent money like water even though the town was less than 10 years old and had built had been built by rough miners and prospectors there were hotels and theaters plus bars and exotic dance halls the comstock low day had been discovered by two brothers the grosses in 1857 the grosh brothers were on their way to calif to the california gold mines when they found the silver deposits they died under tragic circumstances but the mine had been recorded news of the strike was not made public until 1859 however when henry comstock known as old pancake claimed the stake which now bears his name comstock had been a ship shepherder 
and apparently had come upon a gross brothers cabin and seen the record of their discovery comstock sold the claim for practically nothing it was others who made a fortune out of his find the comstock load was one of those unbelievable sources of silver that every miner dreams out about under the houses of virginia city in the passageways and tunnels men work day and night excavating silver in one year alone the load yielded 36000 the rich vein lasted 20 years but in 1882 the bonanza came to the end and in a search for new riches the shaft that had been sunk in sutro tunnel hit hot water and the mines were flooded the atmosphere in virginia city when sam clemens arrived was unreal men seemed to have no idea what was occurring in the great nation that was growing all around them they were self centered selfish men who cared only about easy wealth and nothing about the expansion of the great new nation that was daily moving further and further west although oregon and california had already applied and been admitted to the union the rest of the territory of the west was still going through the growing pains of adolescence it would be a long time before law and order had been imposed and a longer time before the territory was a safe place for men to bring up families in virginia city almost no one spoke of the great civil war it was silver men talked of silver and how to find it how to hold on it how and how to get the most for it people went about in a days of well being imagining themselves rich beyond counting when in reality they owned only portions of a different mines mines that might or might not strike rich ore friends gave mining shares away freely and if a man needed money he sold some of his stock if he kept his shares imagining his riches to be beyond computing the sidewalks swarmed pe- with people to such an extent indeed that it was generally no easy matter to stem the human tide sam clemens wrote in roughing it the street themselves were just as crowded with cars wagon freight teams and other vehicles the procession was endless so great was the pack that buggies frequently had to wait half an hour for an opportunity to cross the principal street money was as plenty as dust every individual considered himself wealthy and melancholy countenance was nowhere to be seen there were military companies fire companies brass brands banks hotels theater hardy gardy houses wide open gambling places palaces political pop wows civic processions street fights inquest riots a whiskey mill every 15 step a dozen breweries and half a dozen jails and station houses in full operation and some talk of building a church the paper the territorial enterprise had been a bankrupt weekly journal when goodman came to the city he had bought it for 214 dollars now the paper had five editors and 23 composition compositors it cost subscriber 16 dollars a year and it had more advertising than it could take care of now a daily newspaper it was clearing me 6000 dollars a month and to some it was an unbelievable success 
after his experience with the little papers of Missouri and Iowa. Goodman, the editor, had found a silver mine in his newspaper every bit as rich as the one that ran underneath his presses. Sam, who was assigned to do a daily column on local happenings, discovered that the Virginia City notion of justice was somewhat limited, although there were trials, there were trials for murder. The jury was usually made up of desperados, and it was usually impossible to get a conviction. Some shaved at the instances of injustice he saw on all sides of his of him. Meanwhile, news came to some that Captain Sellers at bombasting old men who had first used, uh, used the name of Mark Twain had died. Sam remembered the satire he had written years before and was ashamed anew that he had hurt the new hurt the old man. Hearing of sellers made him remember many times, happy times back on that great Mississippi. In his sleep at night, he heard again the call. A Mark three, Mark three, M A R K three, M A R K three, quarter less three, half twain, quarter twain, M A R K twain. He decided that. If he used the name Mark Twain, he would be making amendments, amends to the old riverboat captain in his own way. And from this time on, the sign all his articles Mark Twain. It was to become one of the most famous names in American literature. But even more important, a new man was beginning to take shape where Sam Clemens of Hannibal, Missouri had been closely associated with a certain way of life. Now Mark Twain, a writer whose humor and wit reach out to all the world, was beginning to emerge in a sense. Sam Clemens had stopped being Sam Clemens. From this point on, he was Mark Twain. E, the humorous chatty pieces of Mark Twain were so highly praised that his salary was soon raised $15 a week and Goodman thought so highly of him that he asked Mark to serve as acting editor when Goodman had to make a trip to San Francisco. While Goodman was away, Mark wrote an article atta attacking the editor of the rival paper, the Virginia Union. The editor was so incensed that he demanded that his honor be vindicated in the way of the waste by a duel. Mark had little idea how to conduct a duel and he sought the advice of his friends. In his autobiography, he recalled the advice that was given to him. The correct position for the gun that the position ordinarily in use at Virginia City, inverted comma, that is to say the gun straight up in the air, then brought slowly down to your men, comma, full stop was all wrong. Add the word one. You must raise the gun slowly and steadily to the place on the other man's body that you desire to convince. Then after a pause, two, three, fire, stop. Add the word stop. You may fire, but not earlier. You may give yourself 
एज मच टाइम एज यू प्लीज आफ्टर दैट वर्ड देन वेन यू फायर यू मे एडवांस एंड गो ऑन फायरिंग एट योर लेजर एंड प्लेजर इफ यू कैन गेट एनी प्लेजर आउट ऑफ इट एंड इन द मेन टाइम द अधर मैन इफ ही हैज बीन प्रॉपरली इंस्ट्रक्टेड एंड is alive to his privileges is advancing on you and firing and it is always likely that more or less trouble will result take all the risks of getting murdered yourself but don't run any risk of murdering the other men if you survive a duel you want to survive in such a way that the memory of it will not linger along with you the rest of your life and interfere with your sleep aim at your man's leg not at the knee not above the knee for those are dangerous spots aim below the knee cripple him but leave the rest of him to his mother mark remember the man who had been shot during his brief time with the confederate forces he thought of that stranger killed so meaninglessly and he remembered his vow that he could not shoot again unless he had to yet he knew that honor demanded that he see the duel through news of the coming duel went through town like wildfire there was a new law which said there was no to be no dueling and while macwin was debating the course of his action the governor sent word to him that the new law would be enforced if mark went through with the duel he would receive a sentence of 2 years imprisonment mark was now in the untenable position of having to beg off the duel and lose his honor or going through with it and serving 2 years in prison the governor had also sent word that there was a stage leaving at 4 the next morning mark took the hint and with a friend steu gillis he called the overland coach to san francisco on a spring morning in 